Professor Dave here. Let's converge a little. He knows a lot about all kinds of stuff. Professor Dave explains. Earlier in this course, we introduced the concept of a sequence as a particular list of numbers, and we looked at some basic types, like arithmetic sequences, geometric sequences, and even some more interesting ones, like the Fibonacci sequence. We saw how these can be expressed in a few different ways, as beyond simply listing the terms, they can be abbreviated using a particular expression or formula. We also expanded on this to look at series and summation notation. If you've never seen these things before, go back and check out this tutorial now, because we are going to be building on that knowledge over the next few tutorials, since we now understand calculus. First, we want to be able to assess whether a sequence is convergent or divergent. So let's find out what that means. Take the sequence a sub n equals n. That means that the first term is 1, then 2, and so forth, through the integers. We want to find out what this sequence does in the limit of n approaching infinity. For this one, it's easy to see that the sequence approaches infinity as n approaches infinity. So we would call this sequence divergent, because the limit does not exist. Then let's look at something like a sub n equals n over n plus 1. This will give us one-half, two-thirds, three-fourths, and so forth. We can pretty quickly see that this sequence will approach one, but never quite get there. So the limit of this sequence as n approaches infinity is one. Because the limit exists as a finite number, we would call this sequence convergent. There are some sequences for which it's a little trickier to determine the limit, and with these it may be useful to apply some of the limit laws we already know, as they could help us manipulate things into a form where the limit is easier to assess. Sometimes we can use special techniques, like using L'Hopital's rule on the related function, or something called the squeeze theorem. This one says that if there are three sequences, A, B, and C, and B is always between A and C, then if A and C both have a limit of L, then B must also have a limit of L, because it is being squeezed in between these ones. Some sequences will be divergent without going to infinity, like negative 1 to the n power. This just alternates between positive and negative 1 forever, so there is no limit. So once again, we look at what a sequence does as n approaches infinity. If the sequence asymptotically approaches some finite number, it is convergent. If it does not do that, it is divergent. Now that we understand convergence and divergence for sequences, Let's apply this understanding to series. First, we have to recall what a series is. When we try to add up all the terms in an infinite sequence, we get an infinite series. This can be represented by listing out all the terms, but it can also be abbreviated using the summation notation we already learned with the uppercase sigma. We can talk about convergent and divergent series just like we did for sequences. Starting again with a simple example, simply n, we can easily see that if we were to add up all the positive integers, which themselves go to infinity, certainly their sum will also be infinite. This can be demonstrated by forming a new sequence, where the first term is the first term of the series, and then the sum of the first two terms of the series, and then the first three terms, and four terms, and so forth. The limit of this sequence is the sum of the original series, and the sequence will go to infinity, so the original series is clearly divergent. Can any infinite series be convergent? That is, can an infinite number of terms add up to give a finite number? 
Well, when we looked at improper integrals, we saw exactly this sort of thing happening with a limit of integration going to infinity, but still yielding a finite value for the area under the curve. So we shouldn't be too surprised that convergent infinite series exist. Take for example 1 over 2 to the n. Listing the first few terms, we get 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 eighth, and so on, approaching 0. Let's use the same technique as before, creating a new sequence and listing the first term of the series, then the sum of the first two, which is 3 fourths, then the sum of the first three, which is 7 eighths. And if we continue on in this manner, we see that this sequence approaches 1. Therefore, the sum of this series is equal to 1, and we can say that it is convergent. Different types of series will have different requirements for convergence. Take this generalized geometric series. If we recall the definition of a geometric sequence, it is one in which you multiply each term by some constant to get the next one. So starting with a, we get ar, then arr, or ar squared, then ar cubed, and so forth. So a geometric series is just the sum of these terms, or the sum of a times r to the n minus 1. We will find that if the absolute value of r is greater than 1, a geometric series will be divergent, because these terms will get bigger and bigger, and therefore go to infinity. If equal to 1, we are just adding up infinitely many a terms, which will also be divergent. But going back to the sequence, if the absolute value of r is less than 1, as it is raised to bigger and bigger exponents, each term will get smaller, and the limit of the sequence will be 0. So the series, or the sum of the terms, will be convergent, and the sum will be equal to a over the quantity 1 minus r. In fact, an important theorem states that in order for a series to be convergent, the sequence that generates the terms in the series must have a limit of zero. This makes sense because if the limit were any other number, or if the sequence itself was divergent, there would be no way for the terms in the series to add up to a finite value. And even if the limit of the sequence is zero, it is still not a guarantee that the related series will converge. So sometimes we can look at a series and state that it is divergent simply by showing that the sequence it is derived from does not converge to zero. Take something like n squared over the quantity 5n squared plus 4 from 1 to infinity. To assess the series, let's just look at the sequence of numbers we get from this expression without considering their sum. What is the limit of this sequence as n approaches infinity? Well, we need some algebraic manipulation first. Let's divide both top and bottom by n squared so that we aren't plugging in so many infinities. On top we get 1, and on the bottom we get 5 plus 4 over n squared. Now we plug in infinity, and this term goes to 0, leaving us with 1 fifth. The sequence does not converge to 0, so the sum of this series that includes all the terms from that sequence must be divergent. Now that we understand the concepts of convergence and divergence as they apply to both sequences and series, we are ready to move forward and learn more about series. Thanks for watching guys. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.